Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out. And I'm continuing my watchmaking journey. And if you saw some of my previous videos, you would have seen that I've rebuilt a couple of alarm clocks. So I think I'm more or less happy with those now. So I decided to move on to this pocket watch movement. And this is what people tend to suggest is if you're wanting to get into watchmaking, then acquire a junk pocket watch movement like this one and basically learn the techniques on this. Now I had a go at those alarm clocks because I thought they were kind of cool and neat. So I did learn some techniques on that, but now I'm going to move on to this junk movement. So uh, it is, as you can see, a junk movement. It did come from eBay. It does not have a winding stem, so I can't actually wind it. It's missing a seconds hand. And also, as we'll see when we get stuck into it, but it is missing the escape wheel, which should be on this pivot here, and it should be in there and it is not there, but at least it does have a nice balance. The balance seems to be working properly. So anyway, that's fine. This will never run, but it will still be a good movement to learn some techniques on. Um, I'm also, as I do this, I guess learning techniques for the camera work as well. So I apologize in these early videos, it's probably not gonna be as uh, good as I'd like it to be. But this is the only way to kind of like learn it is trial and error. I've only got the one camera, which is my iPhone. So we'll just see how we go. So the first thing we need to do is to get these hands off. And because I don't have a winding stem, I can't actually move the hands, which is not ideal. You want them to be lined up. But as you can see, they've now come off. I just used these. Uh, these are hand levers. To do this, you can see they have this kind of like, um, there's like a notch in the end of them to get in underneath the hands and then lift them off. And these are just cheapers, cheapies that are bought on uh, Amazon is where those came from. So, so that's the hands off. Take the um, face off. So oh, that one was nice and loose. That's good. Yeah, okay, I see. So those two screws were nice and long, and so there's a couple of like feet. The feet are, are very long as well, so I just kind of like need to ease it out. Still not out. There we go. So this will be the hour wheel, so we'll just take that out because otherwise it'll fall out. And I don't think anything else should fall out on this side. So this is the this is what we call the the motion work because it does the work of moving the hands, hence the motion work. And um, see this little pin just down here. This is for the second hand, except the second hand is missing. So what I want to do is to remove the balance and when it's sort of like all one piece like this, we, um, we call it the, the balance complete because it's one piece. Um, sometimes if you looked at those um, alarm clocks that I worked on, it wasn't one piece. The actual um, hairspring was attached to the body of the clock via a wedge. So um, it's not a balance complete, but this, is a complete part, so one of the things that will be a really important skill for me to learn is where do all the parts, where all the screws go especially. Now, so what I can see is, see there's this little um, notch in the casting of the um, the cock for the balance so that's so I can just get in there like so and lift this free I'm not sure if you can see but there's a couple of pins there Let's ease that down there's a couple of pins there that locate it 
So when those pins are in place, it's perfectly located. So I do know that doing this, I need to be very, very careful not to damage anything. There we are, out in one piece. So, and this is the screw that held it in. So what I'm gonna do now, and I probably should have done this a little bit earlier, but I got so excited about my first watch video that I forgot, is I should put this in a movement holder. Right, here we are. So this is a Bergen 4040, so it has two sides, this is for smaller movements, this is for larger movements. I'm hoping that this stopwatch or this, this, um, this fob watch won't be so large that it isn't going to fit in the holder. So now I can work on this side of the movement without it going anywhere. Here is a pallet fork. And we can see that that's moving freely. So this is the... Um, bottom pivot hole for the um, for the balance complete. I'm just having a look on this side here. I'm not sure if you can see this is the other side of that. It's a screw here. This comes out. Yeah, it does look like it has a jewel. Usually they're kind of like a pinky purple color, but that looks almost clear. So, but there's definitely something in there. And that looks like a jewel holder. But I can't see any other jewels. Like you look at the other pivot points, like these pivot points here. There's no sign of any jewels there. So, um, that's okay. That's not unexpected for a uh, movement of this age, I think. A screwdriver that is too big is likely to damage the walls. And a screwdriver that is too small is much more likely to cam out and damage the screw head and or the screwdriver, which is not good. Okay, so, okay, yes, so again, there's a little um, notch in here, which is designed for getting a screwdriver just in here. Yeah, see that, see how it's coming up? Beautiful. These parts are just so delicate, so we don't want to damage the pivots especially. Here's the pallet fork itself. These are end stones. So they've got that classic kind of um, purple artificial jewel about them. And they, um, they interact with the escape wheel. And this is where we come to a wee bit of a problem. Where is the escape wheel? Well, it isn't there. It should be, it should be in this pivot hole here. I've put some wind into this. So look at that. There's a fair bit of wind in that. Now, this train of gears it should be it should be unwinding it should be flying and it's not but i think i can see why i'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this hopefully you can see the fourth wheel and this is a fourth wheel here that's very odd 
The fourth wheel is just turning freely and it doesn't look like it's straight in its hole. It looks like it's bent over this way, so I'm thinking it's probably got a broken... Yeah, it has. Yeah. I'm not sure if you saw that on camera, but the whole thing just flopped over. Yeah, it has. It's got a broken pivot. There, there it goes. Okay, the thing just partially unwound. So the fourth wheel has got a broken pivot. And yeah, the escape wheel is missing altogether. So, yeah. Okay, so now you can see whatever was sort of like holding it up. Seems to be gone now. All right, so I need to make sure that the um, that there is no power in this. Yeah, definitely no power. Okay, so this is the ratchet wheel. So, this is probably, yep, reverse threaded. It is important to, um, oh dear me, not do that one around the wrong way because otherwise you'll just rip it off basically. Okay, so we notice that it's got this little inset sort of uh, washer here. Okay, that's kind of neat. See how it's got these teeth underneath as well that engage with the, um, I guess that's the winding pinion. This is all very interesting because it feels like there's a little bridge here. Oh yeah, look at that nice long screw. Here's the click spring. So we need to really make sure that this does not go flying away on us. Yeah, there we go. Click spring. Okay, I see. So the screw that held the click in is also holding one end of this bridge in. So the other end of it is here. So I guess you would call this the barrel bridge. Two very, very different screws on either end. So yeah, that's the barrel bridge. The slots on these screw heads are really, really narrow. So 
so I'm kind of having to use a, um, a smaller screwdriver than I want to. But they're coming out okay. Just check that these are the same. These ones. They've kind of like got a, a funny head. Okay, so that bridge is off. So it basically sits like, like that. Okay, that bridge is off. Now, what can we do here? So, again, we see our, our classic sort of train of wheels. So here's the barrel, which is the first wheel. Here's the center wheel, which is the second wheel. This is the third wheel here. And then this is the fourth wheel. So, the cannon pinion is still attached so we won't be able to get the center wheel out let's just have a little look see what we can do here yeah here we go right so basically this movement is missing the escape wheel and it's missing and it's got a broken fourth wheel it's, and I think that the third wheel's broken as well I think this thing's an absolute basket case. Which, you know, may well mean you know, I think I'm going to have to get the center wheel out to get this one out. It may well mean that this thing is not even worth putting back together. I mean, I knew this was a junk movement. This was always an exercise. Yeah, it's not going to come out. So if I can get the barrel out. There we go. Let's see if we can get this cannon pinion out mm. not looking good oh, one of the wheels fell out I can't get the I can't get the tool down because you can see it's sort of recessed there's this recess around here so there's this lip and I can't get the plastic down past the lip. So as such, I don't think I can make this tool work, which is kind of, yeah, it's not going to work. Okay, so there is another tool that you can use in lieu of a cannon pin your removal tool, and that's called the Presto tool, but I do not have one. So I want to see this is not ideal, especially since I have no experience in doing this. There's a real risk, danger of damaging. All right, what we're going to try, since I cannot get any purchase on this anywhere, is this. Screwdriver underneath there and there we go that's got it okay so I'm going to do the barrel now so I've just got it sitting on a staking block and I'm just gonna prise the lid off like so there Okay, so if I just take the arbor out, yeah, there's the arbor. Okay, Uh, 
Okay, yeah, that just kind of like all popped out in one go. And yeah, you can see this definitely is an old school, an old school spring. Um, these days they kind of like have, they're kind of like S shaped. Um, it'll make sense when you see one. But this, yeah, it's very, very much old school. Two itty bitty screws. Ooh. This um this way up movement is too big for the movement holder. So it's kind of like just sitting on the movement holder. I can't actually screw it into position. So anyway, I just want to grab this spring before it disappears. Okay, so that um, I guess is what you would call the yoke, and I guess this is what you'd call the yoke spring. So I think this you'd call probably an intermediate wheel, because it engages with the motion works. You know, I'm wondering if there's actually meant to be like a key that goes in that. It's like got a square tube but there is a um, there's a winding stem in there because if there wasn't these parts would just fall out so you can see you can see down in there that there's a winding stem there and then on the end of it is this square hole so I'm wondering if that is actually has like a key or something very itty bitty screw there I have no idea what that is but it's I have no idea what that is. There's like a little lever here which is connects to this part here. I really don't know what that does. Anyway, uh, okay. So this is. A bridge of some sort. I guess you'd call it the keyless works bridge, but if it has a key, as I suspect a key might go in here. Okay, I see this whole thing just comes out like this. Look at that. We can't call it the keyless works if it has a key, can we? And I suspect that a key goes in there. There's this mystery part up on here. Hopefully some of you might know what this is. Maybe you can note in the comments, but it just comes out like so. What I have noticed is, is that we do not seem to have an equivalent of a um, setting lever spring. So there should be something that gives you that nice positive, you know, click slash engage feel to switch between winding the watch and moving the hands. So I don't know whether this might have something to do with that, perhaps. This uh, is the jewel.
This is the jewel for the bottom of the balance. So there's only two jewels in this. Okay, so a lot of the purpose of this exercise is for me learning the techniques, even though this thing is really beyond redemption. So I want to practice learning my cleaning techniques as well. So um, I've got these little baskets here. I did do some cleaning on the alarm clocks, so hopefully those techniques will sort of port along quite well. Um, so what I'm going to do is put these into these little baskets and just as I'm sort of I guess still sort of learning um, how to identify parts I'm going to keep parts together based on uh, where they go so that was like the ratchet wheel and the click wheel was uh, one bunch of parts so I've got here, for example, are these parts are uh, to do with the, I guess we should call them the keyworks, since I think this thing actually does have a key, um, rather than calling it the key less works. Yeah, so I'll just put all of these guys into these baskets. Then what I'm going to do is I've got these little jars. These jars are full of um, iso, propanol, alcohol. I could put the parts just straight in here, but then I have to go fishing to pull them out. Um, so I can pull the baskets out is easier and then sort of let them drain out. Um, the reason I'm using these jars again as I did when I did the alarm clock is I'm going to put these jars in water which will be the, in the ultrasonic cleaner. So it means I don't have to fill the ultrasonic cleaner up with um, ISO because it's, it's like a two litre cleaner. I don't want to use two litres of ISO for cleaning. That's... Um, expensive because the ISO will, will evaporate as well so that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I don't have a watch cleaning machine so I'm just going to do it this way. Okay so this um, this plate is too large to go into anything that I have so I'm just letting it soak in ISO and I can actually kind of agitate it just using a blower like so and that's kind of a little bit like what you would do if you had a um, ultrasonic and I want to put the other jars have got their bits and pieces in them so they're all soaking in ISO about to put those in the ultrasonic cleaner but just before I do I need to mention that uh, the two parts that are not in there is the balance complete and the pallet fork because both of those have got jewels that are effectively glued onto the metal part so if you like soak those in ISO it could um, dissolve the adhesive. So those will need to be done in something that's not quite so aggressive. So I could use uh, virgin one dip, which I have got some of that. Um, or you could probably use um, lighter fluid, I think would work also. Um, I might give that a go too, because I have got some of that as well. We'll see. Okay, so the jars are in there. So I just need to put in some water, which I'm using solely as a medium to transfer the ultrasonic frequencies into the jars. So that's yeah, pretty good. It's the fill line. Plug power on. And we will start. Now this ultrasonic cleaner does have a heater, most of them do. But obviously when you're using ISO, you do not want to use the heater, most definitely not. The heaters for if you're using like basically soap and water, which you'd use for like a movement or a bracelet or something like that. So we'll run this for uh, 30 minutes. I'll probably run it through twice just to see how we go. And while we're doing this, uh, please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much. You might want to check out my Patreon. Uh, it's actually connected to my other channel, Audio Nautica. So check out my other channel, Audio Nautica, which is mostly about hi-fi and nautical things, but you can support me as a content creator at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash audionautica. 
Okay, I'm going to start putting this thing back together now. And I have decided that I'm not going to put any oil in because it's just a waste of oil. This thing is too far gone. So this is really going to be a strip down and reassemble exercise. Um, this jewel is made up of two parts. So the top part of the jewel is embedded into that plate that I just put back in. And... The bottom part is sort of force fit into the um, into the plate, I believe how it works. So that's why I couldn't get the jewel out of the plate because it's it's supposed to be there. There we go. That was actually a lot harder than I thought that it would be. It's in. Now I need to put the lid on. So there's this little tool that can be used for that. Just sit the arbor in the hole and I just put the lid over like so and it worked oh no it didn't work there that's better just need to click down into place like that okay so we're on to the key works now and there's this sub-assembly here, which goes in here. Okay, that sits there. Then there's this funny lever here. You can see the impression from where it sits. And I'm assuming that this has probably got something to do with the... Okay, not sure if you saw that, but when I put the tweezers in the end where the key would go, this rod pushed out and it pushed on there. It was a teeny weeny screw in there, which I haven't put back in yet, but I really do not know what it does. It might be something to do with this lever, but it wouldn't be long enough for that, I don't think.
Hmm, I thought it might have interacted somehow with this funny lever thing that I do not know what it does. But it doesn't seem to. So I really have no idea what that screw does, but anyway. So that intermediate wheel went there. No, I don't think it matters which way it goes up, but the shiny ring was there. And yeah, that there is the other end of that funny lever thing. Right, so now we're going to try to get this. So this spring, I can see the end of it interacts with this funny lever thing. And then the yoke Fingers crossed, that's how that spring is meant to work. So one end of it is tucked in there on the yoke spring and the other end is tucked in. Ooh. I think that's actually working. Ah, so that's how it works. Okay, see that? Awesome. So if I put my screwdriver in in lieu of a key, normally it's in this position here. But when I push it, so if I just put it in and turned here, that would that would be the hand setting position, I think. Oops, that's just popping out. It hasn't got a plate on it. Yeah, back in there, you. Ooh. Ah, okay, it all fell apart. Anyway, hopefully you saw that working. I'll have to put it back together and put the plate back on it so it doesn't swing apart like that. All right, so I finally got this plate back on and it was a bit uh, tricky. It is not quite working the way that it should, and that's possibly big one because I haven't put any grease on it. I'm not going to because this is just a jump movement. But also, I mentioned when I took it apart that this spring here looked a little bit mangled, so um, it could be that the spring doesn't just doesn't have enough power as it should to. What's supposed to happen is it's supposed to slide that back there is the normal position. And so when you put the key in and push that way, you can see that lever is tightening up this spring as I push on there with the key. And when I release it, this lever is supposed to push this back this way. But it's just um, not quite got enough power to do that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's not the point of this exercise. So now I can turn this over and get started on the other side, which will be a great relief because it actually fits into the movement holder properly. 
Alright, I did have to go back and review the video just to see exactly which way around these wheels go. So this is definitely correct. And now I just need to see about getting the train wheel bridge in. That felt encouraging. Now, bearing in mind that there are no pivots on the third and the fourth wheel, so normally I would have to align them to be in that hole there and that hole there, but they are both broken off. Oh well. It's better now that feels yeah that's down properly now wrong hole should be this hole here This hole here. And these ones were the ones with the funny cut off heads right on the edge. Well, I have got to say, this has turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. So, yeah, it certainly indicates to me that I'm going to need to be a lot prepared, a lot more prepared on the next movement. Um, because... My plan is the next movement will be a watch movement. And it's a lot smaller than this. But part of the problem that I'm having, as you can see, is, is that this thing is so big that it doesn't really suit... It doesn't suit the movement holder. And it didn't suit my mainspring winder. 
so that was a bit of a pain in that regard so anyway the barrel is in and then we have the barrel bridge which goes like this Spring in first, goes in there, and then the click should go there. See how we go. I don't think that's right because there is no spring action, so something's not right. All right, so the click is actually working now, so I just needed to make sure that I had the, the leg of the spring, the right side of the um, click. So this is the ratchet wheel, it has a square hole. Right, so we need to put the screw in for the ratchet wheel now. There we go. Now, the two screws looked identical to me, but uh, one of them's reverse thread. So the so the crown wheel goes in here, and it's got this little collar goes over there. And yeah, these two screws look identical to me, but one of them is reverse thread. So basically, when I tried to sit that one in there, it would not even sit in the hole. It just you know, flopped over to the side straight away, which kind of tells you that it's um, reverse thread. So that means I want to turn this way to tighten it. Okay, let's put the motion works back in now. So, first of all, cannon pinion. Okay. Right, now we need to put the pallet fork back in and I did have to check on the video which way it goes. It's this way. There we go. 
pivot in the hole and then this guy Okay, I think that's right, but I probably put a little bit too much force on the um, getting it into the pivot. It wasn't in the pivot, and I shouldn't have forced that. Could have easily snapped the pivot doing that. So again, this is the reason why we're doing this, so we learn what not to do. And um, Okay, it's the dial on. Okay, so the last part of the movement now is the balance. Just got to tuck underneath the center wheel, like so. There. 
there, I think that is in the pivots. So whether it's just you need luck or what, I'm not quite sure, but anyway. See if we can get these hands on successfully. That one is on. All right, I got that hand back on. And what the problem was, was that there's this little uh, spindle thing here that comes through the back of the train wheel bridge. And that's actually the, um, it's what the cannon pinion attaches to. So when I put the cannon pinion on it, kind of like push this out the back. So this really should have been um, on a staking block or something when I put the cannon pinion in to stop this from being pushed out. And so that pushed in the little pin that this hand sits on. So that's why this wouldn't go on because there was nothing to put it on because the pin wasn't there. So anyway, I think that this movement is now yeah, it is. I've run out of parts. This movement is now back in the state that it was, the terrible state that it was in when I took it apart. But anyway, I've managed to pull it apart and put it back together. So, look, I really have learned a lot. This has been pretty frustrating, to be honest. Um, I guess it shows me that I've got a lot further to go than I thought that I had. Those alarm clocks were a lot easier than this. And um, this thing is still big by watch standards. I think the number one thing I've learned is that I certainly will need to take notes, can't just rely on going back to the video. So I do need to take copious notes. Um, it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it would be in terms of working out where screws were meant to go and so on. And I did tend to kind of like keep parts grouped together, like uh, I kept screws with their bridges and so on and, and whatnot. So that wasn't as bad as I thought that it would be. But, um, yeah, quite frustrating, as I said. I think the biggest problem was that this um, movement's too big to actually fit in the movement holder. And just the size of it is a bit too big for some of the tools. But then I'm sure I'll be complaining about the um, when I move on to a watch movement. So that is what I'm going to do next anyway, is go on to a watch movement. I have got a, a couple of junk movements, so I'm going to go on to those. Um, I hope you got something out of this video anyway. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave some comments. Um, you know, this is all about me learning. I said that this is my vlog of learning how to do this. So if you've got some um, positive, helpful suggestions, um, just saying you should have done blah is not helpful. Um, but if you have some positive, helpful suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. And I'm going to try on a watch movement next. So I look forward to seeing you on that video. Keep an eye out for it and watch out. Bye for now.